Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and once again, happy holidays. I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. In the holiday mood, we are doing the second of the four Home for Christmas scenarios by Highwall Simulations. As you uh, may recall from last time, if you saw it, and if not, I'll tell you now, we are in an alternate timeline where the Port Road did not get closed, and the Strand Rider Dumfries line is now critical, and uh, passenger and freight artery in Western Scotland. And you can read the rest of that yourself for the first time. Uh, so what's going to happen in part two? We will work between Newton Stewart and Castle Douglas. Uh, the motor power is still going to be class 50. Uh, again, yet to be repainted into BR Blue. Again, this seems to be a grammar error that's across the scenarios. So this is something that would need to be fixed across the scenarios, I believe. But other than that, uh, yeah, the train is uh, going... In fact, I'll check that right now because I'm curious. Is it like that across all? Yeah, yet to repainted and wrong scenario. Yet to repaint. Yeah, it's a, so that's something we'll need to fix across the scenarios because that's a bit of a grammar error in the uh, description. But other than that, uh, yeah, it's this, this is the working to Castle Douglas. This is the longest of the four scenarios at 70 minutes. You can see the next one after this is the 35-minute scenario. So let's uh, not waste too much time here talking. Let's get into the drive so we can uh, make this as quick as possible. Hello again. Hope you enjoyed that cup of tea as we'll certainly need plenty of hot beverages in this weather. Open the doors and let passengers on board. We are booked away at 1400 as we need to let a goods train access the loop. Not a problem. You can see the red signal ahead here. Now, something that's going to probably go in the blooper reel. Uh, I actually uh, tried to um, start the stereo once already, and it turns out the red signals didn't load. The green signals were there, the red signals were not. That would have been awkward if I passed a red signal and not known it was there, wasn't it? Let's get set up and ready to go here. Um... AWS reset. I don't think I turned on the headlights last time, but I don't even know if I have headlights. I don't remember seeing headlights. I might not have headlights. Do I have headlights? Oh. I have tail lights. I have tail lights. I have tail lights. I don't have headlights, guys. I can't set headlights, so you can't blame me for not having headlights this time. Uh, tail lights is kind of pointless. Wait a second. So that side, guys, I think that's supposed to be the headlight. Is this train flipped the wrong way? I can't tell if the train is flipped the right way. I think the train is flipped the wrong way, guys. I think there's, I think the headlights are on the wrong side. I will inquire about that, because I am extremely curious now if the headlights are on the wrong side. Is there a... Let me just check something here. Random curiosity. I'm just going to go with the other cab for a moment if there is one. Yeah, it. this might be the right cab. This might be the cab we need to be in to have proper headlights. I can't... I don't know. But either, either way, since you can get into either side of the train, I would imagine you should be able to set the headlights from either side. So the fact that I'm only getting tail lights makes me wonder if the headlights are even set up on this unit. Or if the headlights are only set up on one side. Uh, in which case, that doesn't make sense. What if you can't turn around, you have to drive the other way like I am? Um, yeah. I don't think that's accurate, that the headlights are not coming on. Anyway, we have a green signal now. We have to wait until 1400, even though the uh, train arrived two and a half minutes ago. Before that, I mean. Uh, we still have to wait for that time before it'll leave. Because, before we leave, because you know train schedule times, we have to adhere by them. So we're going to take a moment to look at our train uh, before we get going. Right away, we are booked to cross with incoming trains at Gatehouse of Fleet, Lock Scarrow, and New Galloway, so be prepared to stop at those locations. This is the kind of thing that turns a scenario from a 3, more, three rating into a 2 rating, so I think this should be considered an easy scenario because we've been told about those stops. That is good information. So Gatehouse of Fleet is the first place we're going to be stopping here.
And I'm going to bring up the itinerary to show you where we are going via Creek Town, which is uh, six, sorry, eight miles away. No, it is six miles. I can never read the six of the eight, guys. So uh, six miles away. Just going to get ourselves up to speed here and pull the throttle back. There we go. That will do until we get into the 50. Or 60, sorry, but there is a 50 further ahead, so we're going to hold at 50 for a lot of this drive, I believe. Uh, so after we get through Cree Town, now we're at a 40, now we're going into 60, so we're going to treat it as a 50. Uh, we're going into uh, Cree Town, then we're going to go to the Gatehouse Loop, so 10 miles away is our first stop. Then after that, I'll get on top of the train for this. On top of that is the Scarrow Loop. So you, so you can see the uh, difference in where they're located. Scarrow is all the way over there. Now if we scroll down further, we're going to have New Galloway over there. So these three stops are fairly close. We're going to six, six miles to Scarrow. We're going to have four miles to New Galloway. And then we have Cross Michael as a via waypoint. And finally our stop at Castle Douglas. That's what we're looking at today. So those are our stops. I'm going to zoom out of the uh, view of the train here. We're going to get back in the cab. As I limit myself to 50 miles per hour because of the upcoming 50, we have a downhill. So we're going to see what happens and we are still gaining speed so I'm gonna put a little bit of a brake application on to make sure we don't cruise through this downhill at too fast of a speed lowering speed on downhill not a good idea route designers not a good idea station or not ooh the shade the shade in this area how is it this shady at 2 in the afternoon 1.30 in the afternoon is supposed to be the time the sun is highest in the sky. How is there that much shade? Did the sun will really go that far over behind the mountain already? Wow. So as we approach the 60, our 1 in 107 gradient continues, so I'm going to have to keep a little bit of brake power on here. Thankfully, we don't have uh, air brakes wasting away like we do in the United States. That's the good news. Think they get, you think they would get trains in the U.S. that don't that have better braking without the possibility of losing air out of them? I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and let the... Well, now that we get the 60, we're off the hill, so now we have to apply power again. There you go. That's just how train setups work sometimes. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we don't really need to go up to 50 all, or all, up to 60 all the way because we do have 50 coming up. So I'm just going to kind of idle here. It's going to be like this all the way. We're going to have 50s all the way. And we might even have 40s in a couple places. So don't expect any... Um, don't expect any chance to go at a prolonged 60 along the route. We're going to have a lot of reductions as we enter stations and other things that need to have slower speed going across like certain bridges. It's going to happen the entire way. We have an advance notice of a green signal, so we will not have any problem proceeding at this point, as we expect. Now, something I'm debating doing is trying to do the uh, gassing through the brakes thing again. That might be something to consider doing, but we do have an uphill coming, so I'm not going to play with that yet. I think that is the uh, an old station on the line. I don't know the name of it right now because I left my iPad in the other room, but I think that was the location where a station used to be on the line. Uh, that station closed in 1951. I know it started with a P. I just don't have the name of it on hand right now. I'll see if I can add it to the text. Now, maybe that station might have been further back as well. I'm just not 100% not sure. Oh, darn it. I'm not 100% sure on the location, but I think that was where it was because it looked like a station building. 
One kilometer over, that's forgivable. We do have a 40 coming up. Speeding into that at 50 is not forgivable. Of course, this uphill is bringing me down very early for that, so... I'm going to try to manage my speed for now, and then I'll let that uphill slow me down as I get closer to the 40. So for right now, we're going to keep the power going. I'm not trying to drive this in any kind of in a hurry setup here. I want to, just, I want to make sure I get to the uh, signals with plenty of time to spare for each of the uh, things that are going to happen along the way here. But I'm not trying to speed my way through the scenario. Because if you, if you do speed, you, like, you don't get penalized for speed, but if you do speed, you're going to have longer waits as you wait for these trains. So you're better off just going casually and sometimes having that train waiting for you is better, depending on the circumstances. But knowing how uh, high wall simulation scenarios are casual drives compared to what you get on some of the DTG scenarios where you have to basically meet a very tough timetable almost all the time, um, knowing that these are very casual drives, we're probably going to have like three, four, five, six minutes to spare anyway, even if we go the speed limit. So, yeah, don't speed. It's not going to help you in this scenario. You can probably travel five under and you're probably okay the entire way. I'm going to go ahead and start dropping back to 40 right now because I have lots of time to do so. So some of the AI trains in this scenario include a uh, static train with a new Galloway goods siding. Uh, we... That's somewhere along the way. That's going to be a class 3 shunter, class 03 shunter that we're going to see at some point. So that's going to be probably along the way somewhere. I think that's going to be where we make our st one of our stops, actually. Our third stop, if I remember correctly. Let's get that throttle down. I don't want to speed into the 40. Thank you. So number 3706 is somewhere as well. I don't know where it is, but um, it's somewhere. It's not static. It's moving. I don't know where we're going to see it. We're going to see a class 101 at Newton Stewart. It's going to be sitting in the platform. I don't think it's got a service for a while. Uh, there's a D, number D442, which is another one of our, another of our brothers, so to speak, another class 50. Uh, that one's going to be hanging out at Castle Douglas when we arrive, so I don't know if it's getting ready to start a service or what it's doing. We are going to see a class 105 coming along. That might be one of the trains that we are waiting for. Um, but because the 3706 shows up first, I have a feeling that might be the one that we see first. We'll see what happens when we get up to the, to the location. Uh, I'll leave the other ones alone for now because they're, uh, they don't start moving until late in the scenario. So, whoops, about to speed. Caught myself. So we'll look at those other, uh, the green signal. As we'll look at those other, uh, two trains that are on here as we get closer to the, um, possibly seeing them. And this is Cree Town. So now we are four and a half miles from the gap from the gatehouse loop. We probably should have whistled when we came in. I didn't pay attention to that. Rail fanners would appreciate a whistle. And it's kind of worrying everyone else to stay back for the platform. Not safe on the on the uh, on the yellow line on the platform. It's not safe to cross that when there's a train going by. I mean, you can do it, but we're not responsible for what happens to you. Just to be clear, I'm saying you can do it, just we are not responsible if you lose your life. That is a side effect of that. You have to realize that. It is a free country. And before this goes entirely morbid, let's uh, talk about something I need to correct in the previous scenario. I probably will edit this in the text on the other scenario, but, uh, video, but uh, something I need to correct. I was talking about the requirements, and I said the VR Blue Pack features the class 03, 25, 31, 1, 105, and 101. I, I said that in the wrong order now, 101 and 105. I have to correct myself. The 101 is not in the VR Blue Pack. Uh, there's actually, I knew there was five or six trains in it, but I did some research between the scenarios, and it turns out that the Class 37, the VR Blue Class 37, is in the VR Blue Pack. At least one model of it, anyway. Uh, there's probably another one with the Kuju Pack. Pretty sure there is, because I think I've seen it on uh, older routes. So there is one in the Kuju set as well, but there's another one in the uh, VR Blue Pack 
new different model of it. I don't know the difference. Uh, I think it's um, just a basic BR blue, while the one in Kuju is a BR blue with split head coat or something along those lines. So I think the basic BR blue is the one that's in this pack. Um, watching the throttle because we're on uphill and we need. Oh, we have a 60 coming up. We just don't want to speed for right now. Speeding, bad. So, the Class 37 is in that pack. There's also a Class 55 in that pack. Now, I don't think it matches this era, so the 55 has not put in use on uh, this. I, I don't know exactly when it went out of service, uh, but I want to say it did go out of service sometime in the 70s. I'm not 100% sure of that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I think it was not used because it does not fit the era. I think that was the whole idea behind that. So every train in the pack is used except for the Class 55 in these scenarios. And when I was talking about swapping out 101s with the one in the pack, well, they're all with the 101 pack. So the BR Blue and the BR Grey are both in the 101 pack. So if you don't have that, you can use the Weardale Teasdale one if you have no Weardale Teasdale, but they're all going to look like trains that run on Weardale Teasdale because they have a special logo on the side for Weardale Teasdale. So um, if you're okay with your trains all looking like the same thing, sure, go ahead. Uh, that is an option, or you can put some other train in there that you like. You can put another, I don't know, maybe you can put another um, 105 in there instead, if you have the 105 standalone or something like that. I don't know. You, you pick what you like if you don't have the 101. But the 101 is such an old, uh, older model, older DLC, I should say, not necessarily an older model, but an older DLC. And as a result of being an older DLC and also having the custom destination possibility, the 101, you can actually set your own destination. If you want to have a train going to uh, Brighton, you can stick it on the London Brighton route and put Brighton on it, and it will go to Brighton. Uh, if you want to have the train go to um, Malay, you can put it on the uh, Highland Line and take it to Malay. The 101 literally was everywhere, so that's why they set it with a custom destination. And that's why it's a train that you almost absolutely have to have in your collection if you are uh, setting up trains for trains in there. You almost have to have that uh, in the collection. To have a to have any kind of reasonable collection here, so even though it is older, definitely get the 101 because it is versatile in terms of being able to set destinations. It has uh, the interesting play style of having to use gears, and uh, it will therefore challenge you to a certain extent in how you drive it, while also having realistic destination options on it. So, yeah, definitely get it. The other notes regarding the requirements are exactly the same, so there's no other uh, corrections to make, just on the fact that the 101 is not in that pack, and the 37 is. So you can see the gatehouse up loop is, uh, or gatehouse loop up stop, I should say as it's labeled on the uh, HUD. It is coming up. Even though a 40 is our upcoming limit, there is a 20 right after. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the uphill start slowing me down right now. And I fully expect to have a stop here for an extended period of time. You can see the yellow uh, distant warning telling us that we're gonna be having a stop up ahead. So the other train has not arrived at the loop yet. We are gonna have to wait for it by the looks of it. Quick peek ahead at the hut if I can. That's where we are. There's our stop, and the train coming is going to be a class 105. That train does not arrive for another five minutes, so we are definitely going to take our time here. Might be another six minutes, actually, because it starts moving in five minutes. So that's one thing that I would suggest, uh, and I kind of said it last scenario too, I would suggest move the train that you're waiting for back a little further and start it a little earlier, because that way then you don't, then there's less chance of a player, it will still happen if a player scans ahead, if you're going to scan ahead before an hour before you encounter a train, you're going to see it sitting there, there's nothing you can do about that, but um, if you're going to ha have a stop and then have the train that you're waiting for so close sitting there for a while, it's better, oh I should have had a red here, I have a green here actually, sorry. I do have a red coming up, but I have a green here. I panicked for a second. I thought I was running a red. Luckily, I wasn't. I'll take my time anyway. Ten is fine. 
11 is fine. So it makes sense to me to move the train a little further back. That way there's less chance, especially if a player takes their time. There's less chance of a player seeing the train not moving when the when that's the part of the storyline that they're waiting for. So at this point, if the train were starting back close to um, the previous... What's the next stop here? If the train were starting close to Lock Scarrow, uh, it could probably start moving by now. And it would still arrive when, when you want it to, and it would go by and you wouldn't think anything of it. Uh, but here we are, drink cold milk. Yes, drink cold milk. If you're lactose intolerant, drink cold milk. Um, I'm trying to make my stop with, so I'm trying not to talk too much as I'm concentrating where I want to stop. I want to stop right at that signal with it just in view. I'll stop before the crossing. That makes sense. Or not. I have to actually go on the crossing. Well, thank you for that. Fantastic. I have to actually go on the crossing. I mean, I get that this is the proper stop, but why do we have to cross on the crossing? Like, look at this. We're on the crossing. <laughs> why would you do this? In any case, we have a bit of a wait coming up here. Uh, and as I was saying, if the train starts further back, it can come forward and uh, we wouldn't see it stopped this close. So it's just the whole less waiting element that uh, some players like, especially to make scenarios shorter. Uh, in my case, I can just go ahead and skip ahead in the video. So it's not going to be any longer for you. We'll see when this train starts moving. And as you can see, I went ahead and backed up a little bit here because I thought I'm not going to stay on the crossing. It just doesn't seem right that they would make a stop right on the crossing. So I've gone ahead and uh, removed that. That is a crossing between the platforms. It should be free for use. So I'm no longer sitting on it. Time for no one to use it. We'll see you when the train starts moving. So we are now on our way to Lock Scarrow. We just entered into a 50 mile per hour section, so we're gonna go ahead and speed up. I'm happy to know that I correctly judged my speed on that uh, leaving shot, by the way. I was at 17 when I uh, came back to the uh, cab here. So the speed limit was 20 leaving the station. Good judgment on my part there. I'm getting better at this, I think. So yeah, that was our stop at, um, what was that again? Gatehouse Loop. That was our stop at the Gatehouse Loop. We still have Lock Scarrow and New Galloway as stops up ahead.
Yeah. I believe the train we're going to be waiting for up ahead is going to be a class 25. I need to get myself down. Oh, wow. We're on a downhill with a 40 coming up. That is deadly. Let's uh, lower our speed somehow. So I think, yeah, I think the next train is going to be a class 25. And uh, that is number 25096 and 25098 set to move uh, at 35 minutes after the hour. Since we have a very, very short distance to go, I have a feeling uh, that's going to be actually sitting there waiting to move while we're already stopped, just like the other ones. So that's how casual these timetables are. Take your time, guys. Take your time. You can even just stay at 40 for this drive. You don't have to treat this as a 50, like I did. I thought I saw a complete wall for a second. No, there was actually a tunnel in that. It looked like a complete wall when I looked up for a second there. Okay, that is definitely not a speeding thing I want to do. That's not speed today anymore. I already did once. Well, more than once if you count the last scenario. Coming out of an uphill now, so speeding should not be possible now. I think we're on a viaduct. I don't know the names of any of these viaducts, but it is a viaduct. You see that it is definitively a viaduct. 100% it is a viaduct. Oh, I should have gotten it from this side. That would have been a good thumbnail if I got it from this side, wouldn't it? Too bad. Too bad. Oh well. So I'm now defending to take my time. I dropped to 33 miles per hour. Four miles to go to the up stop loop. Now at 30 miles an hour, it would take about uh, eight minutes to get there. So a little over eight minutes to get there. So that would actually work for our timing purposes fine. That tells you how much time we have. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it casual. Let's enjoy the drive. I feel like I need one of those shir shirts that says, keep calm and stay casual. I think the original meme was keep calm and carry on. I'm surprised the uh, meme evolved into things that don't rhyme. Like you expect keep calm and be strong because it rhymes to a certain extent. It sounds close anyway. But um, keep calm and drink, drink milk is not exactly a uh, rhymable meme. My speed has not moved. I'm actually okay with that. My speed has literally not moved. It will as we cross this downhill, however. It will start going up. There it is. We are on a 50, so I can allow this to happen. You see there is another 40 coming up. This is probably going to be followed by another siding limit. Probably a 20. I'm really starting to gain speed now. We're on a 1 in 76 downhill gradient, so I've moved the throttle to an idle position. break on because I was hoping not to gain this much speed going into a 40 but we did while we're doing that let's take a quick peek back at the 105 that we saw at the previous stop point uh, that is not it. it it seemed to be making a stop there oh here it is yeah it's still sitting there it's not going anywhere um, it might have been it might have made sense to at least send it off towards Cree Town and then put it into a portal before it got there that might have made sense to uh, do that because from the continuity aspect, if you don't move, it's just gonna sit there too. Um, and it makes sense they would be having its own service. So I'm surprised they didn't get moved off down the line to its own service after that. So 
We're now in the 40. I'm going to go ahead and just try to manage the brakes so I can stay around 40 for the time being. Because the downhill is going to keep increasing it, obviously. This is another viaduct? Let's get a shot this time, shall we? Ah. That might be enough of a shot. That's enough brakes. <laughs> right now we're only expected to arrive one minute before the train starts moving. That's casual. I need to make the casual jokes on the next video because that's going to be my Friday video. It's only Wednesday. <laughs> oh, what can you do? So 50 is coming up. We're going to continue to treat it as a 40 because our stop is literally uh, about one and three quarters miles away. A little more. Actually, no. Take that back. A mile and a half away. So we're going to keep treating this as a 40 because there's no reason to go any faster. For us, anyway. We have a mile of 50 that we're not going to treat as 50. I don't see any downhill either, which is very good for us. It means I can just idle. Idle everything. Ooh, it's a 15 ahead. I was a little off on that speed. I said 20. It's a 15. I think we're going to get into the siding before we actually have to slow down to stop. So that's probably what the 15 is. But we are getting an advanced warning that there is a stop ahead. So I am going to slow the speed down anyway. Just in case the next signal is the red. Maybe the siding splits before we reach that first signal. But then we're limited to 15 through the siding as we leave. That's a possibility. The chances are that the uh, yellow in that case is probably warning us that the main line is closed access to us. And we're going to pull in the siding. That could be what it means. We shall see. We're just going to bring the speed down just a little more here. We're far enough from the signal, I'll take a little bit more just coasting. Going by a water feature on the route. on just in case. We need to get down to 15 anyway for the siding so it makes sense. Now I will peek ahead. We can see that uh, we have a raised arm up ahead telling us to go in the siding. So I will take the brakes off. The raised arm is now becoming more and more definitive as we get closer. You can definitely see it now. So we would be going through the siding expecting to see a stop signal, especially as we've been told about it. But now that we've been pulled into the siding, we would expect to see the stop signal so someone can pass. This is a normal expectation. This appears to be a reloading point of some form coming up ahead. I think it's a water stop, actually, for steam engines. But this is not a normal platform, so it could... You know, it is a water stop. Yeah, both sides have a water stop. Look at that. Oxcaro is a water stop. So, uh... Trains can out, steam trains could easily be uh, pathed to uh, both go through 
uh, at earlier times to allow another train to pass. And while they're waiting for the train to pass, they pick up some water. That's basically what they can do. So there's a refuel point along the way for uh, water for those boilers. You saw that other side join us as well. You can see there's a 10 going to that siding if you're coming from this direction. So the siding is a 10 if you happen to access it. Back after I come to a stop, I'll show you that sign very, very quickly to give you an idea of what is going on there. We're not going to have a lot of time to uh, get pictures because the other train should be moving now. So come to a stop quickly and take a quick peek at the map as we come to a stop. The siding is... Uh... Actually, there is no other siding. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. There's a sign right there. You can only access it from the one side. So that's the siding. In any case, we have a train coming and we are waiting for it. And it should already be moving. It's a class 25. Let's uh, go ahead and wait for the stop to process we will wait for that train so you can see we now have the check mark our next stop is new galloway but we're not going to be there for at least nine minutes so there you go Leaving the Lock Scarrow Loop. Our next stop is New Galloway. I should have done that earlier. So we're going to maintain a 15 mile per hour speed on the as we leave the siding. And I have information now that at the next stop at New Galilee, we're going to be seeing a Class 37 going by. Certainly emblemic of the uh, day that we're, the era that we're in. 50s and 60s had the, uh, I think it was 60s, not sure about the 50s, but definitely the 60s had the original Class 37 and the original paint schemes. And they persisted in the 70s in many cases. So um, we're going to see one of those paint schemes today, number D. Six seven or am I not right? D six seven one eight. Yeah, that's the one we're gonna be seeing going by. Fifty miles per hour is now our speed limit. Because our ETA appears to be right on the mark for when this train is supposed to arrive, I'm going to go ahead and drive the speed limits to see how uh, that works for us. We probably will have another minute or two before the train actually goes by upon arrival, but we might as well just make sure we arrive on time to have time to uh, set up a camera shot for it to go by. That's kind of what I'm working on here. You're on a downhill. Why am I speeding? Don't speed. <laughs> I was about to speed. Think I didn't actually speed. But I was about to speed. A little huddle on the line. Must be a worker shack or something. I don't know. Notice the arm in the other direction was raised. Okay. We are gaining time on our ETA, so I'm happy to see that. I 
I wouldn't mind arriving right at 2.45 in the afternoon. Now we're losing time again. So it looks like the butter zone for gaining speed is around the 46 to 47 mark. Which means I'm gonna stay around the 45 to 46 mark. For right now at least. There's a 15 coming up, so I'm going to go ahead and let myself run to the speed limit for a moment here. This will gain me a lot of time, I believe. This might actually be new. This is already new Galloway up here, actually. So, yeah, we have less than three minutes to make our stop here. Based on my math right now, I'd say we're going to be there in two, if not for the 15. The 15 might make it a little longer. So the ETA looks reasonably accurate right now. Now you are going to see a class 03 shunter uh, hanging out in the siding here. So we'll take make sure to take a good look at that while we're at the uh, new Galloway station. We'll make sure to take a glance over at that and see that. Number 03014 is just uh, idling there waiting for operational instructions. Here the uh, gust of air as we cross a, a body of water there. A river, it looks like. Very nice. Now in the shaded mountains here. Rock formation on either side. Can you just imagine, and I've talked about Sudbury before and the rocks that they do, but it's the same idea. Can you just imagine having to blow all that rock aside in order to send the track through here? Can you just imagine how much effort and work that takes? I couldn't do it. I wouldn't survive back then if I was doing that job. But then I'm not in the best shape, so that's part of the reason for that. Anyway, yellow signal, because it's a yellow signal, I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting the siding pull and stopping in the siding. But because it's a yellow signal, I need to slow down in advance of this signal just to be safe. So I'm going to pull the speed down now. Looks like my ETA was not as accurate as I thought it was. Uh, because... Now I'm suddenly approaching the time where I said it was reasonably accurate for our stop. And needless to say, I went to 15 a little early, which doesn't help matters at all. Scanning ahead here. I was right. We have a siding pull, but I'm not predicting that when I see the yellow signal warning of a stop. It's only warning of the main signal. It's not warning of the secondary one. This Now, I don't know if this is a bug or if this is how it's designed to work. Uh, I might only be giving you the distance signal on the main aspect. Um, but normally when you see that distance signal saying yellow, you have to literally hit the brakes and be ready to stop at the next signal no matter what the aspect is. It could be a siding entry, but you need it's also kind of a way to tell you to slow down anyway. So it kind of works as a slow down mechanism so you don't speed through. So maybe that's how it was meant to work. Maybe that's how it was designed, and maybe that's normal. I don't know. Anyway, we are stopping here at New Galloway, not for a passenger pickup, as tempting as it may be to open the doors. I'm just going to pull up a little further beyond New Galloway here. We're going to go into the uh, signal area. The train that we're waiting for should possibly be on the way by now. Is that something that's moving? Yeah, there's the 03014. I knew there was an 03014. That's our static train. Once again, I ha actually, I didn't want to cross the crossing, but I'm going to do it. I should have stopped before the crossing. That would have been the smart thing to do. But anyway, here we are at New Galloway.
back in the cab of the class 50. Here comes the 37 that we're waiting for. We're gonna get our, actually, signal's already up. I was just gonna say we're gonna start moving forward in preparation to go, but we can already go. So let's continue. And there's the uh, shunter wait, sitting there just doing its thing. Just a little way to say hello. He obviously is not able to come on the track, but he's static anyway. Oh, I did not think I was on downhill. I read that. I read the tea leaves wrong on that one. We're on a downhill. 1 in 121 is actually gaining speed for us, which I was not ready for. It's an even heavier gradient now, so we're definitely going to gain speed now. And a little bit of a bump there as we uh, join onto the main track. So I guess the track's not fully smoothed out in this area. It was a little bit of a bump there. Now we need to get our train fully past this 45 before we can actually get moving at full speed. This will be the last stretch of our journey. We're going to go by across Michael, then we're going to make our stop at... Um, at our final destination, which is Castle Douglas. Final destination for this leg, anyway. Not our final destination for the entire journey. There are, of course, two more parts to come. Castle Douglas to Dumfries will be part number three. And then we're going to have to drive from Dumfries into Carlisle, which I've been told in advance is going to be very busy. And according to um, Highball, it's one of the uh, busiest, possibly the busiest scenario he's done so far on any route. He hasn't done anything on the London routes because he knows they would have to be extremely busy. He's worried he, could probably, he might not be able to run them on his uh, rig, which is understandable. So he likes doing a lot of the more less populated, more casual routes as a result. So I'm going to give it a shot and we see how it runs on my on my own uh, rig, which is it's a three-year-old rig, but it should still be able to do it. It has enough uh, RAM and enough. Um, Capability. I've run, I've run uh, scenarios with a lot more trains on them before, but I've never loaded Carlisle yet, so this is going to be on this route anyway. So it's going to be interesting to see how Carlisle comes in on this uh, journey, whether it's a laggy load or what happens with it. Anyway, we should be arriving at 14.55 at, I'm uh, sorry, 15.05. I read that wrong. 15.05 at Castle Douglas. 14.55 is where we're expected to go through Cost Michael. A little bit of a difference. And as you can see, five minutes for that. And if I hop on top of the train for a moment to get over there, you can see we're not very far away here. Once, oh, let's not speed. We're not very far away. It's only about three miles. So, three mile difference there. So we got ten minutes to go three miles, assuming we arrive at, Cas at Cross Michael at 14.55. We have a lot of time to make that three mile journey. I don't have any information on any more trains that are starting movement, so we're not... I didn't respond to the 30. Uh-oh, that's a penalizable offense. I didn't respond to that speed limit for the bridge. Let's make a deal, guys. You don't tell them, I won't tell them. Fair? You got a deal? Shake? Good. Another case of that could have been a nice screenshot. Now we can go 60. Okay, let's move. <laughs> I could have stopped at 45 earlier, but I just decided to wait till the 60 for some strange reason. Some smoke from a chimney there. Now this was a platform I think we just went through. What, I don't remember what platform it was. That is Parton. Parton platform.
We're going to take it easy here. Our arrival time at Cross Michael is still 14.55. Even with that speeding penalty. <laughs> Part of the reason I'm going to go slow right now, it's a little slower right now to make up that speeding penalty. I just take gain too much time on the bridge. The only downside, even though this is a Christmas themed set of Sarah's, the only downside is we don't have any kind of decorating going on on the route. We kind of need, and this is something I would love to see on holiday Sarah's in the future, uh, if anyone who's creating Sarah's is listening, have some uh, special assets that ship with this scenario and uh, have them included as part of the scenario. It would actually be kind of cool to uh, see like a wreath hanging on station or something along those lines, or some Christmas lights somewhere. That I know in the past there were people who created assets like that. Uh, it would actually be kind of cool. This might be something for DTG, DTG to take into account. Maybe you have an asset pack with Christmas themed assets and Halloween themed assets. I know you have the, um, for example, Game of Gnomes, which gives you all those assets, but that is some it's sort of like a niche thing. It's better to have a marketplace item, I think, with all sorts of uh, Christmas assets in it. And. Uh, or and it may not even be DDG. Any other developer can do this as well, and it can just be sold on Steam. And it would make those assets available for workshop use. It could allow people to create Christmas-themed or ha Halloween-themed or even Easter-themed if you have, like, Easter Bunny assets or put an Easter Bunny on a station. It would be cool to see uh, stuff like that going on. So... So yeah, having those as asset packs in the marketplace would not be a bad idea and it would encourage the use of them for scenario making purposes. Would a lot of people make them? Maybe not. But uh, one is better than none. If there's enough use of them, then people will uh, get the pack to see what those scenarios look like. So a minute later than I expected for Cross Michael. That's okay. Main line is open this time, side line is closed. 45s are only coming up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stay at the speed area. That was Cross Michael. There's a nice big building going by there for Cross Michael's station. If you want to know what it looks like today, well, take a road trip because you can't go by train. But you can take a road trip there and you can see what it looks like today. Or you can go on the bike path and just travel the line to where the station was. That's another option. Of course, part of the trick is knowing where to stop to know what the station is. So interesting, the 45 we're in right now is going to open back up to a 60 one more time. We are on a slight downhill. I don't think it's enough to gain speed, but it shouldn't. Our speed shouldn't decrease as much on this downhill anyway. And now we are definitely on a heavier downhill, so we are going to gain speed now. Well, that changed in a hurry. Thank you. 
Welcome to how I've gotten used to playing this game. Running the speed limit. <laughs> exactly the speed limit. You don't have to in these scenarios, but you can. Look at the arrival time, 15.01. You do not have to be there uh, that early. You have till 15.05 as your timetable stop. And I expect we're going to have a five-minute wait at 15.10 when the next scenario starts as well. Because the first two did. Why not that one too? So you saw that the uh, HUD was zoomed out for a moment there. We saw the uh, 30 coming up there. Now it's zoomed in because we've gone under 45 or 44 or whatever the speed is for it to zoom back in. So we don't see it anymore for a moment. But we still know the Castle Douglas remains 1.5 miles away. I think the HUD is now something like a 0.5 or a 0.6 um, distance. We can confirm this once a... Uh, feature comes in like that stop signal right now. 0.9, sorry, 0.9. I should have, I knew I should have said 0.9. 0.6 is a little slower. Okay. So 0.9 difference. What the heck is that? I have no idea what that was. I have absolutely no idea what that sound was. Yellows. We're probably going to be cleared for entry into the platform. Because of the yells, I did slow down to a 20 miles per hour. That was uh, that is the safe thing to do. And I know I call out all the time in official scenarios that when you are trapped, like there was a scenario I drove on another route that I, that I haven't actually introduced yet, but I will be showing you that scenario at some point. Uh, there's there's a um, scenario that I've played where you actually have to drive under a situation where you requested to pass a red signal. Uh, you're expected to drive in that situation under caution. But the way this scenario is timed, you have to go at the speed limit. Requesting a pass, going at the speed limit, hoping the next signal will not be against you. Um, kind of weird. It is a little weird. I don't understand why it's set up like that. But it is. But uh, these scenarios are casual enough that you have the time to look ahead and see that you have a green signal going into the platform. But you, can't, but you can drive at caution and not worry about blasting through the speed limit. So this is an important reason why beta testing the scenario before you put it in a package is a good idea. You have to see how your timings hold up against what the root player driving experience is going to be. Do you drive from the experience that everything is gonna be green, you can expect a clear drive, you can expect to get arrive with no problem, or do you drive seeing that there's a yellow, there might be something unexpected ahead that you have not been told about. If you don't slow down for that yellow, you could blow a red signal and run into a train. The obvious answer is you wait at that, you expect that red signal and you prepare to wait at that red signal and potentially not run into a train. So it's important to beta test scenarios to make sure that the player experience matches what the timings are and if your player experience does not match and you are late when you play safely as a player then you need to change those timings you can see there's one of our brothers there number 442 is there d442 that is another class 50 just like us undoubtedly he is doing a service to Stranraer harbor he just had to wait for us because it was a single line all it was I should have stopped here. <laughs> Just because of the crossing, I should have stopped here. Well, I'm already on the crossing. We'll pull up a little bit now. We'll get the entire... We might as well get the whole train in, actually. That makes sense. The crossing's probably closed while we're stopped anyway. So the whole train is now in the platform. Without the engine, of course. 
Doors are open. Let's look at our train as we prepare to uh, take another break. And as we are reminded to drink cold milk, uh, we are going to uh, also be reminded to visit Scotland in the background there. Uh, we're waiting for the third part of our scenario to begin, which is going to be next time. Make sure to like this video in the meantime. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, you'll know when I post that video and other videos. And yeah, the holiday period continues. We have two more holiday stereos. We're going to see them on the 23rd, so Christmas Eve Eve. And then the last one will be on Christmas Eve itself. So this one takes place apparently in 1975. We're going to have, even though this is an alternate era, we can go ahead and say that we're going to play that last part 47 years to the day of this scenario. So uh, there you go. There you go, fun little fact. So there's no other trains coming in, we're just waiting, and there it is. Excellent work so far, we should be on the move again by 1510, provide nothing untoward happens. Yep, there you go. So uh, 1510 is when the next turn will begin. Uh, make sure you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you, you're part of the world. And if you are watching on my Western Lines Scotland playlist, where I may put these after the original scenarios, I don't know in the future, we'll find out. Uh, that next video should be starting in three, two, one.